good, y'all. I killed me. Oh my god. I don't know if that helped. That shit was good, y'all. You feel me? Little vlog. I'm gonna do a little vlog episode today, man. I'm on the road, bro. I was like, I'm on the road. On the way to Charlotte. On the way to Spectrum Center, you feel me? Opening night vibes. Um, so right here, I just wanna do something different. I just wanna do something different. Like, all right, fuck, I'm gonna make a vlog. Be in the arena on opening night. Free t-shirts. Uh, I have, LeVar's gonna be in the building, you feel me? The BBB GOAT, you feel me? LeVar's gonna be in the building. Um, my boy already says there's a playoff atmosphere in there. Um, he does the camera work. He does camera work in the Spectrum Center. So he already says it's like a playoff vibe in there right now. Um, it's like a two and a half hour drive for me from you know, from Raleigh. I'm like a hour and some change in. I think I probably got like a, maybe an hour to go. But uh, yeah, you feel me? Now see, if, um, I did an episode. I did a podcast episode. Uh, with the keys to the game, keys to the game, moving the ball, um, yeah, moving the ball, find the open guy, as usual, you know what I'm saying, trying to find the open man, getting out in transition, but initially, rebounding the ball to get out of transition, just because, you know, Sabonis killed us on the boards in that fucking playing game, so it's like, this really is a playoff game for us, though, because this, this is a revenge game, you feel me? If we beat the Pacers tonight, it's kind of like last year's really in the rear view and it's a diff whole different team, you know what I'm saying? So, we got to, you know what I'm saying, be able to box out and do what we need to do on the boards, crash the boards hard. Um, because, I mean, Sabonis and Turner, you know, if you let them eat on the boards all night, we can't get out and run. We can't get out and do any of those things that leads to good offense. So, uh, that is the key to the game. Uh, another one is, you know, saying uh, bench production. Cause, uh, I mean, we can't have these seven and eight minute droughts like we did against the Mavs. And, you know, I know that's preseason or whatever, but we can't have these seven, eight minute droughts. So when the bench comes in, they have to produce. Uh, Kelly, Kelly Oubre's back. Um, I think PJ's back. He should be fine. I, I think everybody's back. Um, so, yeah, you know. That bench was got to produce, and I mean, even staggering the bench, you know what I'm saying? Like, you don't have to go five in, five out. You could leave a couple starters out there. Anything just to prevent four, you know what I'm saying, four or five minute scoring drops. It can't happen. We can't win like that. Um, and outside of that, let me see what my keys to the game were. I had it written down in my notes, but I can't look at that right now. So, um, yeah, boxing out, running in transition, moving the ball. Um, Crashing the boards. I think that's really everything. Um, capitalizing at the free throw line. Don't leave no points at the free throw line. Um, let's see. Mm, did that really? Oh my god, that's done out of my face. That feels so good. And there it goes right back. Since I said something. But um, yeah, I can't really think right now. This is, oh my god, I cannot see shit. All right, y'all. I'm in line. Oh, no, I'm not you feel me. Parking was a bitch. Parking was a bitch. They got the canine. Yeah. Parking was a bitch, bro. That shit took me forever. And I had to pay twenty dollars. I had to pay twenty dollars. And now I'm hearing that T Row is hurt. So Kelly Oubre starting, and it's just like, oh my god. But yeah, I'm gonna continue when I get inside. I'm gonna try to know how it goes. Yeah. They got this bitch. Oh, it's crazy. I'm in this bitch. Damn, I missed tip off, bro. I'm in this bitch. Free poster. I got a hoodie, you feel me? Trying to find my seat. Hello. I got Rose. Rose Z. Seat 3. Oh. We've had a couple dunks, Kelly Oubre's had a couple dunks. Um, 
Ismith just came in. McDaniels just came in. Martin just came in. Peter just came in. Kelly Oubre is the only starter. Oh, Jelly! I'm just saying right now, I mean, we're hitting threes. We're hitting threes. We're, we're moving the ball. We're moving the ball, but on defense, we just can't get a fucking stop. We can't get a stop. And, um... We can't get a stop, and we can't get any fucking boards. Like I Ooh. Oh, wait, get over here. Let's get the cut. We gotta go to the other door. Baby, LeVar. Woo! We took the lead, man. We took the lead. We was down 16. Gordon trying to tie it up. Fucking okay, minute 16. Atta boy! Come on! What's the bonus? Oh yeah, 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 man. He he killed it. He killed us in the playoffs, man. <laughs> it's disgusting. Come on, PJ. Let's go. So PJ just hit the fucking kick. The fucking potential game winning free throws. We just need to get a stop, man. Here we go, bro. Big hat. 
31, nigga went dumb. Hey, Slitty, you feel me? Hey, Slitty. We'll see you all back here. Hey, Slitty, man. Hornets get a win. LaMelo has 30. Go to Hayward has 25. It's really crazy. That nigga LaVar. Oh, my goodness. That was great. Hey, no, I Hornets get a win. You feel me? Niggas right here by the court, they trying to kick me out though. I'm finna be out there. <laughs> 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 yeah, y'all. Yeah, I'm on the way home now, man. And, uh, shit, now that, like, when the game's over, man, that shit was fucking insane. That was the craziest game I'd have ever seen live, bro. I'm trying to tell you that shit was crazy as fuck. Uh, PJ, I take back everything I ever said about you, my boy. Well, not necessarily, but hey, man, I appreciate you, man. <laughs> I appreciate you, though. Appreciate you, man. Shit, bro. Gordon and Gordon had missed a free throw, so for PJ to come through, hit both of his, and win the game, man, it was major. Bro, the hive was alive. That shit was crazy, bro. It was crazy. That was such a good way to start the fucking season. And all of that without Terry Rozier, bro. That's the biggest thing. All of that without our leading score from last year. Now our leading score is LaMelo with fucking 31. This shit was litty, man. What's good? Welcome to another episode of Buzz Boys. Man, look. I went to the game last night. So this, this is going to be like my post-game experience. All of that. You know what I'm saying? I did a vlog. I did a whole vlog episode on my YouTube, I'm finna edit that now. And I'm finna do this last little episode of Tight End. Um, man, that game was fucking crazy. It was amazing. I mean, the first half, we, we, the defense was terrible. We played good offensively, but it was just, you couldn't get a stop. You give up 75 points in the first half, it's like, damn. But at the same time, I kinda knew, like, the Pacers ain't finishing with 150. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, we gonna get stops eventually. And the Pacers came out of halftime missing missing the shots that they were making in the first half. So, I mean, because we played some good defense in the first half. They were just making everything. Chris Dorte is apparently prime Clay Thompson. Okay? Prime Steph. Like, who the fuck is this guy? But um, I'm, just, I'm, watching, I'm watching the game again right now on YouTube. It is just insane, man. Like, it's just insane. That, that third quarter comeback. It was like, we were just raining threes. Everybody's making threes. We're getting layups, dunks. We're getting turnovers. We're getting out and running every fucking chance we get. And it was just amazing, bro. I mean, we had nine steals in the game. We had nine steals. It was it was good. We had for like four in the first quarter. You know what I'm saying? So it's like we were playing the passing lanes all night, stealing the ball, getting out and running. I think we had like 22 points off turnovers. So, I mean, we were doing our thing. But, man, just the experience of just being down in that bowl, bro. Like, um, and this open, it was opening night. And uh, they gave away shirts, like these shirts. These shirts were, um, uh, like, the hive is alive. These shirts were all, like, on the seats or whatever. They're all on the seats in the lower bowl and then they give them away up top in the upper bowl so like every every fan could have got a shirt i'm saying i mean at the end of the game people walking out with like six seven shirts you know what i'm saying i only got one you know so i didn't od but yeah i mean really the only reason i didn't od because they're extra large like they're big as fuck so <laughs> i didn't feel the, the i didn't feel the need to grab six or seven extra large shirts like what am i gonna do with this but uh yeah, man, it was a great experience. Oh, yeah, I got this fucking... I got this poster, too. Damn. This shit big. I got this fucking poster. So I can, you can see it's like, you feel me? It's like the whole, the whole squad. It's like the whole squad. Um, fuck. <laughs> it's like the whole squad and it has the uh schedule up there you know just like every other poster damn man can't roll this bitch back up but yeah man damn that shit been fucking bent and got into and shit <sighs> but yeah man that shit was litty bro 
and when I tell you guys that like the hive was dead ass alive, like bro, to watch the team, I mean we're down sixteen at halftime. You know, to start the third quarter, the Pacers keep doing what they were doing. The lead goes up to twenty three. We're down twenty three points. Then the comeback starts in the third quarter, man, and we just start getting steals. We start raining threes. We go on a twenty eight to two run. Like, bro, we were up 10. It Like, in the blink of an eye, we're down 23. We're up 10 points in the same quarter. This all in the same quarter. <laughs> like, it was crazy, bro. Like, all of a sudden, the Pacers are the ones trying to come back. And it's just like, it was so fucking crazy, bro. Everybody's screaming. Everybody's yelling. I mean, bro, the, the mellow MVP chants were crazy. When he hit those back-to-back -back threes, he hit those back-to-back -back threes, and then um, he went to the free throw line, and everybody, MVP, MVP, and that's when he had like 21 points, maybe like 23 points, he finished with 31, so, you know, and uh, in the post-game interview, he was like, yeah, I heard the chance, you know, I heard him, you know, I know that. Were your ears hearing any MVP chance? Yeah, definitely. I heard it. I mean, the city turn. <laughs> Love it. We're going to keep on trying to win. Awesome stuff. Hey, LaMelo, keep on keeping on. A lot of fun to watch. Yes, sir. Thank bro. you, sir. You know, I know that made him feel good. Like, bro, because he played like a fucking MVP. He almost had a triple up. He had like 31, 9, and 7. And let's talk about Gordon, bro. Gordon hit some clutch shots, man. He was doing his fucking thing, man. And we did this. The biggest thing, man, we did this all without Terry Rozier, bro. All without Terry Rozier. That's the biggest thing, man. Oh, my God, man. PJ, I love PJ, bro. PJ, I don't give a fuck what I done said about you, bro. You made those free throws, so you forever in my favor until two days from now <laughs> at the next game. <laughs> For the next two games, we forever locked in. You feel me? But, and then, but like, bro, that's the thing. PJ, PJ makes the game winning free throws. And then comes back down and gets the stop on Sabonis for the for the game. And that's the shit where like, okay, PJ, if you can do that, if you can stop Sabonis on game winners and shit like that, you can be small ball five. I don't give a fuck. Cause that shit was impressive right there. Like, man, look, man, shout out to PJ, bro. Like, shit, I had to watch that shit, bro. I had to watch that shit just to hear uh I had to watch that shit just to hear uh, Dell and Eric Collins call that shit, man. You know, said so that's the only thing about if you at the game, you can't hear fucking Eric Collins yelling and shit. But Eric Collins is like an embodiment of Hornets fans. Like the way Eric Collins act is the way the fans act in the crowd. Like, bro, the guy I'm sitting in front of, he literally is googling the refs' names because we had a couple plays where we thought they should have been charges and they ended up um being blocking fouls and they were crucial moments in the game bro he's done google the ref's name he's like ronnie ronnie you fucking suck da -da -da. Like, <laughs> it was just crazy it was crazy bro steve you fucking suck it was crazy bro and um i mean you know it just goes to show like bro once you get the fans something to cheer about we're gonna support your ass we're going to support your ass, bro. Like, at the end of the day, as soon as we started making shots, we started cheering. Yelling, defense, defense, defense. Next thing you know, we back in the game. Next thing you know, we win about 10. And even Kelly Oubre said that shit like, bro, you can feel that crowd. Like, it makes all the difference, bro. Like, imagine if they were in the bubble or some shit and they're down 16 and they're down 23. The game's over. But, nah, when you have fans cheering, yelling, you feel me? That shit was deafening. Uh, Rick Carlisle, the Pacers coach, bro, he had in earplugs, bro. Like, we was litty. The hive was alive. That shit was litty, bro. And uh, I just wanted to share that experience with y'all. I'm going to add this to the end of the vlog. Um, yeah, uh, the biggest takeaways, man. Oh, let me cover my keys to the game. My keys to the game was rebounding. We did that. We out-rebounded the Pacers. Let me, let me pull up the stats, man. I had that shit pulled up last night on my phone, but what the good did that do? We out rebounded the Pacers. Um, shit, we got out and ran, forced turnovers. We did everything that we that we were supposed to do, man. Like us out rebounding them was the biggest thing. Like, bro, you feel me? We shot forty three percent. They shot forty six. 
We shot 42% from three. They shot 36. And the thing is, the way Chris Dorte was raining threes, you would have thought that they, man, look. The Pacers were 17 for 47. I could have sworn these niggas was like 30 for 47 because, bro, they were not missing. But that was mainly in the first half, though. We sustained that first half run and we were straight. And the thing is, we shot 66% from the free throw line. They shot 87. Like, bro, we can't leave points at the free throw line, man. We left a lot of points at the free throw line. But, um, I mean, excuse me. I see, on this thing that I see, it says that we had 46 rebounds and they had 51. On the thing that I saw, it said we had 64 and they had 51 or something like that. They said that we out-rebounded them. But now that I'm on Google, it says they have 51, we have 46. So, I guess we didn't out-rebound them. I don't know. But, um... We had 29 assists. We had five blocks. They had 10 blocks. It's crazy. We had nine steals. You feel me? They had 16 turnovers. We had eight. That's how you're going to win a game, bro. You you force a team to have twice as many turnovers as you. You're going to get points off those turnovers, man. We did good. We did good, man. We got out and ran. We covered every single key to the game. We got the bench production. Ish Smith played great, bro. Shout out to Ish Smith, man. He played great. Um, it, I mean... That was a great pickup. Um, a kind of a little, a little story though. Developing Book Knight did not play at all, at all. And in, in the preseason, he was getting a lot of minutes. First half, second half, he was getting a lot of minutes. And uh, when Terry Rozier was out in the preseason, Brago said, "I'm not going to start Book Knight because I want him to get used to his role as the sixth man." So when you refer to him as the sixth man and then he doesn't play, it's like, hmm. Because Cody Martin was the first person off the bench last night. Cody Martin subbed in. And then Ish Smith came in. PJ Washington came in. Um, fuck, I'm missing somebody. But uh, Kelly Uber was the only starter out there on the floor once all the other four reserves came in. Kelly Uber was the only starter still in the game. So, I mean, it was a tight rotation last night. Um, and uh yeah book knight did not play um but man gorda hayward has some clutch buckets 27 points he plays 35 minutes miles, miles bridges 13 to 8 in 33 minutes and he could have got more touches too mason Plumley he had eight points but the five assists from the center spot that's what we need man that's our second leader in assists Lamelo had seven assists ish smith has five kelly i mean mason Plumley has five when your center has as many assists as your backup point guard that's good now, I'm not going to lie. Jalen McDaniels, he ain't really do too much of shit. You know what I'm saying? 11 minutes, 1.1 1. 1 assists, he ain't do shit, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to see. And I'm, I'm a, I am I'm love Jalen McDaniels. He's one of my favorite players. But he, if he's not producing, I don't want to see him get minutes. And PJ played 19 minutes, bro. Five points, five rebounds. But he's the hero of the game. So it's like sometimes the minutes don't matter. It's what you do in them. It's what you do in those minutes. Kelly Oubre has 14. Um, Plumlee has... 10 rebounds he could have had a double double for sure he missed plenty of free throws he could have had about 12 to 14 points he missed plenty of free throws he could have had 12 and 10 and 5 like that's a good ass game cody martin he had 10 and 6 in 24 minutes and i think that's kind of like the perfect amount of minutes for cody martin about 20 20 24 minutes you know what I'm saying not too much i i'm not one of the people that says oh martin didn't deserve to play he's a good perimeter defender and he hustles hard and he gets out and runs dunks all that shit he deserves to play. But uh, I think we got to kind of find some minutes for Book Knight, though. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. We'll see how, how it goes when Rozier comes back, though. Because then it's like, shit, somebody else's minutes are going to get diminished. I don't know. How many players is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's a nine-player rotation. Um, you feel me? Rozier is going to make it ten. So we might start subbing in five and five. Yeah, so shit. I don't know, man. Hopefully some of the rookies can crack into the lineup we'll see how it goes i'm gonna wrap this up because this shit's getting kind of long it's at 12 minutes but yeah man good win hornets that shit was so litty like bro when pj washington made those free throws man like that sh bro it exploded but once he got that stop bro i'm gonna put the video in in this as well like once he got that stop bro that shit went crazy like we won nigga the game over no foul, man, we won. It was amazing, man. That feeling, it was surreal. I would never forget that shit. Like, that is an amazing way to start the season off, man. Amazing way to start the season off. I'm so proud of y'all, man. 
Um, next, who do we fucking play next? Um, the next home game is against the Celtics, but um, we got the Cavs tomorrow. You can go out be a team like the Cavs, and this isn't the Cavs are old, you know what I'm saying? They do got Lori marketing now, Evan Mobley, Jared Allen. I don't know how the fuck we're going to match up with that big-ass lineup. They got seven, I mean, they got three seven-footers in their starting lineup. I don't know how the fuck we match up with that. I don't. You know what I'm saying? We got Cavs, then we got to go play the Nets in, in Brooklyn, and then the Celtics come to us at home. We're on the road a lot to start the season. We're on the road a lot. Like, I think they said, like, 10 out of our first 12 games on the road or something like that. Hold on, let me count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Out of the first 12 games, 4 at home, 8 are on the road. So, like, we starting the season out on the road, bro. Like, on the road. It's, it's, it's crazy. Like, in December, we're going to be at home a lot in December. And no, we're not. <laughs> Damn, I don't know when the fuck we get a, a big home stand because we on the road a whole lot to start the season, man. So I don't know. Hopefully this team can travel well and pull off some upsets on the road like I know we can. Um, surprise some folks, man. But shit, I'll get back to y'all on the next one, man. Peace.